Now, this may be an unpopular opinion, but I'm gonna go on a limb here. What is up, YouTube? Welcome to Fred's Full Throttle. Due to very high demand, this is the next in a series of videos I have planned about the C8Z06 pricing. In today's video specifically, I wanna talk through a few things. There have been several questions or statements I've seen in the comments, in the forums, and on Facebook, which I'd like to answer or address. I also want to share a few more of my thoughts and opinions about the pricing situation in the C8Z06. First, I want to say a big thank you to Keith Cornett over at Corvette Blogger for picking up my last video. I follow Corvette Blogger pretty heavily and I've cited them many times in my videos as a source of good information and it was really fantastic and a great moment for me to see my own channel highlighted. I am deeply appreciative and I'm humbled. So Keith, thank you very much. You made my entire week. I also wanted to say a big thanks to John over at Mid-Engine Corvette Forum for posting my last video there as well. I've been very busy as of late, what else is new, and I haven't had as much time to check in on the forum in the last week or two, so I really appreciate you catching my slack. I'll do my best to post over there whenever I can, and I just have a lot on my plate at the moment. So thank you very much, John. All right, without further ado, let's dive in. Up first, I wanna cover perhaps the most controversial thing I've seen in the last week or so. Several people cited Taj and the engineering team's comments about the C7 Stingray and the price gap with the C7 Z06 and the hinting that that was a good ballpark idea for the price differential between the C8 Stingray and the C8 Z06. A few people even outright said that Chevy lied to them. First, let me say that anyone who believes that GM intentionally misled anyone is just plain incorrect. There is no incentive for GM to lead people on and to lie about anything. Have you watched all of the Z06 videos that GM has put out? The entire design team, the engineers and staff involved with the project are as excited, if not more so than we are for the car. These are our people, gearheads through and through. I'm sure they're as aghast at the situation as much as the people who are making those statements. Additionally, there seems to be a group of people who think that Chevy is just gouging people. I don't for a second believe that this is the case. Conveniently, they seem to be ignoring the economy, the state of the world, and a bunch of other factors that contribute to the price of goods, not even just cars. Now with these statements, I have not seen a single bit of evidence that indicates that that's what Chevy is doing or would even consider doing. Having an expensive product doesn't mean that you're being ripped off. It's just a convenient argument that you can levy without needing to justify anything. Now getting back to those quotes, there are a few factors here that I think are worth considering. I'm gonna start with that the price is what it is for a reason. Looking back at the history of the prior top spec Corvettes from prior generations, it's all right there. GM has always priced these cars as a relative performance bargain. No matter which Z06 or Z01 model that you look at, the cars have always been huge value for the money due to the performance and capability that you get. GM is not in the business of vastly overpricing their cars, especially the Corvette, and history shows this to be the case. And as I said last week, the C8 Z06 is still a huge performance bargain. Now, as I said a moment ago, the price is what it is for a reason, very likely a practical reason. In case anyone was born yesterday, the world, and specifically the US, is in fairly unprecedented and, dare I say, tumultuous times, which can affect pricing. The reason could be inflation or materials costs, supply chain costs or issues, the chip shortage, the pandemic, labor problems, the list goes on. The reality is that all of these likely contribute not just one or two. Every other industry in the world is seeing dramatic spikes in their costs, and most of those pass it right along to the consumer. Have you tried booking flights recently? How about building a house or building an addition on your house in the US anytime in the last two years? In fact, there aren't many industries that haven't had a huge cost impact as a result of these things. The disconnect for me is people asking for, no, demanding a world-beating supercar from Chevy, one that can fit golf clubs, remove the roof, made with the finest materials, and be serviced anywhere. Oh, and they expect it to be completely affordable. Now, this may be an unpopular opinion, but I'm going to go on a limb here. The idea of the Corvette that the average person can save up for and afford does exist. It's called the Stingray. I don't think the Z06 has ever been what I would call affordable. The C8 Z06 has been in development for at least seven years, as I mentioned in one of my last videos, and that's seven years of development, research, and testing without earning a single penny back on that investment. GM is a business and they have to make ends meet. If it means the car that everyone is asking for is a little bit more expensive than expected, then that's kind of what it needs to be. 
I don't want GM to sell the car at a loss, and I don't want them to go out of business. Sure, I don't want to spend a dollar more than I have to. We all feel that way. But I do want them to charge what they need to in order to keep making Corvettes so that there is a C9 someday so that they can do great things with cars. Now stepping back again to those comments for a moment, I want to call out a different comment made by a subscriber named EK on my last video who made a really, really great point. A lot of people were reading Tej's comments and figuring that that was a dollar figure. However, Tej may have meant a percent figure. EK said, and I quote, it is in line with the previous Z06 pricing. C7 Z06 was 150% of the base model. This Z06 is also about 150% of the base model after you factor in an additional 10% or so for the massive inflation that's hit anyone. No one lied about anything. Now, sure enough, the math actually checks out. Factor in a year-over-year -year inflation of about 10%, and you arrive at almost exactly the price of a new Z06. EK, you get a gold star from me. If you see this, feel free to send me an email at fredsfullthrottle at gmail.com. I have something for you. Lastly, well, on this point at least, I want to highlight that I'm not a GM apologist. I think the pricing announcement could have been handled better, but at the end of the day, there is no way for them to have raised the price without people getting upset. Simple as that. No matter how much planning, explanation, and communication they could have done though, it wouldn't have ever been enough. As I said in my last video, people are passionate about money and cars. This subject deals heavily with both, and that's why it struck such a nerve for some. I think GM should have reined in those people who were hinting at price earlier and told them not to. For all we know, maybe they did. Most large companies have strict policies about speculative commentary and forward-looking statements that aren't part of official messaging. It's unfortunate that an offhand comment or two can cause this much outrage, but in today's world of every phone being a recording device, that's the reality. Those policies are there to protect the company and the team. Also, engineers and anyone else who shared that info likely never had full visibility. They may have been speaking in good faith, but at a huge company like GM, they compartmentalize everything, so there's likely quite a disconnect between the engineers and the finance folks. Engineers likely aren't involved in much, if any, of the pricing decisions or meetings. Heck, they may not have more than even just a ballpark figure told to them early in the process. I haven't held much in regard of these hints, even if it comes from people at Chevy, because unless it's announced, it's not official. But perhaps that's also why I'm not as upset as some, because I realize that until official channels announce anything, the rest is all just speculation, no matter what the source is. Now moving on to a question with a bit simpler answer. Why aren't reservation lists showing a large drop off? There's probably a couple of factors at play here. First, several dealers with automated lists only update them periodically. I know Sioka and McMulkin both do that. McMulkin's website even says that their list only updates once per week on Mondays. So that means you aren't going to see changes any other day during the week. Next, I think that most people are sitting on this a bit, thinking about it. If you've sat on a list for months or years at this point, what's another week or two to think it out before you do anything? The last thing anyone should do is make a knee-jerk reaction, especially when this much money is involved. I think you'll see that people who've waited years for the car or have a low reservation number are less likely to cancel. There will be some, but who knows how many. However, people way back in line are already looking at a multi-year wait once the car starts shipping and may be less invested in the car or open to considering other options. I think over time there will start being some drop-off, but... No one really has any pressure to do anything until they are asked to put up the money. So why cancel unless you need your deposit back? Okay, next I want to talk about what seemed to be a very vocal group of people saying, show me the 40k of additional value in the Z06. People who are claiming the Z06 isn't worth the money. First off, no one should have to work to justify that additional 40k to you. If you don't feel the car is worth it, then don't buy it. I mean, people are paying 120 k for a C8 Stingray these days, which takes nothing away from the Stingray, but come on, this car is going to be a pretty big step up in performance. I almost can't tell if these people are being serious. But for the sake of argument, I'm going to humor this one. The car has one of the last naturally aspirated non-hybrid V8s of likely any car to be released. That alone is pretty special. Next, it's a hand-built motor, which also just happens to be the most powerful naturally aspirated V8 ever made. That LT6 V8 enables performance that rivals cars costing three times as much. 
Did you look over the list of the rival cars that GM provided? Here's the cliff notes. The Z06 is faster than the McLaren 720S and the Ferrari F8 Tributo. And you'll have enough money left over to buy two more Z06s. In a time when Ferraris are being criticized for less feeling and sound, Chevy also just so happened to make the best sounding engine this side of a 911 GT3 or a Lamborghini V12. And don't forget lap times. Though we don't have anything official, last fall one of the cars was spotted at the ring doing a 712 in heavy traffic with a passenger, which adds weight, during an open public lapping session by a YouTuber who was using their phone as a stopwatch. The driver didn't know they were being filmed or timed and likely wasn't trying to set an all-out best time as they were testing. Now let me remind you that anything under about 7.30 is pretty darn fast to begin with and that the 911 991.2 GT3 managed to do a 7.12 during a dedicated record attempt. Also keep in mind that the 911 GT2 RS, which they were consistently benchmarking with throughout Z06 development, is the current production vehicle record holder at the Nürburgring with a 638. I would be shocked if the Z06 doesn't beat seven minutes, likely by quite a hefty margin. Now how about all those factors to help you justify that 40k? Buyers and fans have been saying they want a better Corvette, a faster Corvette, a nicer interior, but they don't want to pay for it. But here's the paradox. If you're not tracking the car, not dipping into that performance, not touching that upper crust of performance above what a C8 Stingray can do, but don't want a Stingray because you'd rather have the top spec car just because, then why does anybody have to justify that price to you? It's either worth it to you or it's not. For years, Corvette fans have been asking for a true supercar Corvette. So GM built one and now it's too expensive. Performance doesn't grow on trees. As I'm sure this is getting a bit long, I have a few more points I'd like to touch on very briefly. If a 16K difference suddenly makes a $90,000 car too expensive, could you really have comfortably have afforded the car in the beginning? Most people are specking options, so why not drop one or two of those pricey options and still get an awesome car? Many are talking about affording the car versus affording the car, which includes all related expenses. The spending doesn't end with the car itself. There are all kinds of other things you're going to have to be paying for up front. A car cover, paint protection film, possibly ceramic coating, sales tax, gas guzzler tax, excise tax, insurance, etc. And separate from that, there's even the total cost of ownership, which likely is going to add up pretty significantly over time. Also, a large portion of the internet, people on YouTube, people on Facebook, seem to think that there are no dealerships that are doing MSRP on the Z06. I've seen a huge number of comments saying things like, good luck finding dealers that'll do MSRP. While thousands of us do have reservations at MSRP, it might be a wait, but we all know what we signed up for. Now I find this one interesting. Most buyers are not low on their list and they're not gonna be getting the car this year. That means that you have plenty of more time to save up and cover that price difference. Everyone's acting like they have to come up with the money tomorrow, like someone from the mob is knocking on their door. I, for one, am going to use the next year or two to shore up those differences and get to where I can afford those CCBs that I really want to have. Lastly, I had a great realization the other day. Dealer markup is going to cut down on flippers. Hear me out. Any dealership with a big dealer markup is making a $130,000 car, just to use round numbers, into a $180,000 car. What's a flipper going to do? Charge $230,000 for the car? Additional dealer markup is going to at least make a bit of a dent in the flipper business because I don't know of too many people willing to pay double for a car. I just thought that was pretty funny. One of the things we all hate, cutting into the profits of another thing that we all hate. Sometimes the universe has a funny way of working out. Anyway, I have a bunch of videos headed your way on the C8Z06, the pricing, and even some content on the E-Ray, so stay tuned. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this, and until next time, Fred out!